With 1.2 having come out in full release, I have to say sorry, but there's a lot of other changes in 1.2, and because I did say sorry, obviously I have to mandatory play as Canada. We're gonna be playing as Upper Canada, unifying Canada, and then showing those uh, dirty Americanos over there why we're a better nation, all right? Just kidding. Don't shoot me. I love you guys. Please. I'm sorry. Now, if you guys enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like. If we get 5,000 like on this, we're gonna do a second part where we're gonna conquer the entirety of the Americas as Canada. And consider subscribing if you enjoy the content. I'm trying to get to 200,000 subs by the end of August. And if we get that, then I'm gonna do a mega campaign starting with Imperator Rome and all the way to Stellaris, basically all the Paradox games. Might even think about City Skylines. I don't know how I would fit that one in, but let's see. Now, now, the way that it works, there's a few different nations in the northern bit of the North American continent, and we have to unify with them. There's a very easy way of doing that. We go to our journals, decisions, and we have the Confederate Canada mission here. Once we've established good relations with our fellow Canodans, and we also need to have nationalism. So that's going to be our primary thing we're going to be doing here. We're going to go here, and we're going to start researching nationalism. It's going to take three years, so by the time that that's done, we should be able to uh, start confederating, because we're going to focus on expanding our economy and growing it now. We got absolutely no buildings for our urban and we only have a couple of farms for our rural. So honestly, I also chose this as one of my initial 1.2 patch nations because it is a little bit of a tougher start and you have to build everything from the bottom all the way up, which means it's going to be an easy way for me to explain all the steps of making a successful economy in Victoria 3. We also have to navigate all of this legislation here, which is really not the best legislation let's face it but at least our government is fairly good we don't have only landowners we also have the church and the armed forces meaning that we have quite a few laws that we can start changing from the very get-go one thing i like is that we start with the dedicated police force which means that we do not need to change this this is one of the first legislations you want to change because most nations start with local police force but these bad boys starting with dedicated means that the uh, landowners are not getting the 10 percent extra political strength so we can keep it as dedicated police force for now. I would like to get charity hospitals, but there's other things that I'm going to prioritize before that, such as agrarianism. I'm doing this because the initial bit of our particular campaign is going to focus on developing the uh, basic goods, namely all that farming stuff, wooding stuff, mining stuff, and so on. We will later down the line change over to laissez-faire. That is my preferred economic system. So once we go to agrarianism, next up, of course, it will be going ahead and we'll be getting charity hospitals so we lower the mortality rate. Now we also need to go to our construction queue. We do not have any construction sectors built. So we're going to start by building our first construction sector in Ontario. And then after we build that, we're also going to queue up one of our logging camps because we need logging camps to produce wood, which is needed in order to produce buildings, essentially. We are a part, of course, of the British market, which is at the beginning the largest market since it includes Britain, it includes the Australian ports, the Indian ports. So we're never going to run out of goods as long as we're a part of that market but later down the line we will leave it establish our own market so up until that point in the campaign we're just gonna have to slowly build up from the ground to the top i guess yo did i just rhyme am i like eminem no no i'm not i'm I'm definitely not like Eminem. <laughs> one more thing to note is that we have consumption taxes assigned here on grain. This is one of the worst things you can do. First off, it costs 500 authority points. So that is a complete waste of authority points. Second problem is that grain tax means that the lower strata are going to have a harder time accessing grain. So if we go to our population, you're going to see that grain being more expensive is going to make everybody's life a lot harder, especially the lower strata, the ones that are struggling usually the most. So we don't want to have a grain tax. Instead, we're gaining those 500 authority points from canceling that tax. And then we can, if you really want to get any tax, you can assign services tax, which is acceptable. And you can add a few extra taxes for luxury furniture and so on. But we're not adding all that stuff now because we're going to use the extra authority points to set up some edicts here, such as a promote social mobility that increases our education access. The problem is that we don't have any proper education going on. We have legislation for education, which means we have the institution available, but it is 
is level one. So it only gives us 10% education access. We could potentially bring it up to level two, and then it would be 20% education access. So by getting this, we get an extra 25, which is a huge deal in our only state, the upper Canadian state, basically. Another thing we want to do is we want to encourage agricultural industry because, well, that's the only thing that we have right now that we're producing. I'm also going to add road maintenance for now because it offers the state construction efficiency bonuses. Later down the line, I'm going to add the migration attraction to get more population and so on once we need more population. For now, we don't need it because we already have 85,000 people unemployed overall. So after we've employed those bad boys, we can start getting more people once we have jobs for them available, right? Since we're also going to be confederating with everybody else, we're going to start improving relations with everybody around us in the North American continent here. Well, not everybody, I guess, just the two nations adjacent to us, Lower Canada and the Hudson Bay Company. Once we get a second declared interest available, we can start doing uh, the same with uh, Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and the Columbian District. We cannot right now because we don't have uh, an extra interest available. And voila, we got our first war because our overlords in the British lands are attacking Ching for some reason. Fair enough. Not really my problem. Don't care about it too much. We're going to still focus on our stuff over here. We have started building the logging camp and we also seem to have gotten a great arianism. That's pretty good. Now, the problem is that you can see here we're losing a lot of money really fast because we basically have no income whatsoever. But that's going to change the more buildings we have and the more people we have employed. So hang in there. You're going to go into debt. You're going to have to take a lot of credit as you go along in the initial phase of the campaign. It's absolutely normal. Don't be worried about that. I know a lot of people when they see the red in their economic tab here, they get panicked and stuff. Don't do it. It's fine. Nothing nothing bad will come of it. It's actually the natural process of building up your nation in Viki 3. I'm going to queue up two more lumber mills so I have enough basic uh, lumber in my country before we build up anything else. And now we can also get those charity hospitals I was talking about earlier. Now you can see that we're building the second lumber camp and now we're not losing 2,000 ducats anymore or pounds. We're losing 1.86 thousand because we have some people employed making some money for our country from the first lumber camp that we produced. If we hover over here, we can see that we have 5,000 people employed and these 5,000 bad boys are making us a little bit of money. It's not too much. Lumber mills will not be producing too much economy. If we really want to boost up our economy and get in tone with the big boys, we're going to have to build a tooling workshop, which is what we're assigning up next after our two more logging camps are finished. And we also got a little bit of extra authority, so I'm going to use that up and I'm going to assign a consumption tax on opium. If you're going to get high, you're going to have to pay the high tax boys. I guess you could say it's a high price to pay. <laughs> Ah, I love my jokes, but I'm I'm the only one that does, so it's it's just sad, really. All right, now we also seem to have the private industry building up something in our country. They're building up a tobacco plantation. Now this happens when the investment pool is big enough that they can afford to build up a building in the country. So keep an eye out on your investment pool. That is what affects uh, the uh, private construction queue overall. Oh, take tax from the tax fund. Oh, okay, sure. I don't mind if I do. Also going to queue up a food industry because right now I'm getting a, quite a little bit of predicted earning from building up this. This, uh, food industry. I'm not going to build anything else from the uh, urban sector for the time being because after we get the tools and the food industries, we need to start building up more of our basic stuff, namely farms, logging camps, and then we'll come back to the main actual economic producers there. I'm confused. Is this from the beginning? And I just never noticed. It could be from the beginning, to be fair. <laughs> I'm really bad at noticing stuff, right? I admit. Oh, looks like art is in super high demand. You know what? I'm going to change a few things around. I'm going to set up my uh, art academy to be the next one that's going to be built up in the queue and then we can do the food industry afterwards i'm going to spam maybe a few art academies to boost up my gdp by a lot since the way that this essentially works is what we build right now i.e the art academies are going to be sold over to the entirety of the british market and there's a lot of rich folk in the british market over in the uk maybe even in the indian parts so despite not having the basic economy going by building those art academies we get rich in the process the downside is that if we get kicked from the british market Market, then we die but we're not gonna get kicked from the British market because we are their subject we're very small they literally have no reason to kick us out our tooling workshop is doing pretty darn decent we are getting a lot of money from them right now the private industry is also building one extra tooling workshop I canceled the food industries instead I queued up two sulfur mines because sulfur is in high demand as is products from the uh, livestock ranches so we're gonna queue up two livestock ranches also and one wheat farm might as well get the basic stuff done in whilst we can right plus look at our economy we're 
we're on the plus so that means we're making a huge progress from these buildings we're not losing money anymore whilst building up things also gonna try and get the professional army done so we have more barracks available this would mean that we get an extra 100 barracks up to max level whilst if we have our current legislation we can only have level 25 max barracks level oh man i actually forgot to start improving relations with the british honestly i thought that i did but i i completely forgot so another thing you need to do is you need to have 50 relations with the british in order to confederate that kind of cucked me a little bit it's a good lesson not to forget to pay attention to these things i guess that means we're gonna have a little bit of a delay in uh, confederating with our neighbors here but it is what it is boys looks like our overlord dragged us into another war this time they're banning slavery over in tidor and the dutch have something against that for some reason all right not gonna say nothing i don't know man feels like the dutch might be on the wrong side on this one you know what i'm saying whilst i'm doing this uh, war that i'm actually not really taking part in i'm also research okay the war is already over fair enough i'm researching intense agriculture since we are primarily an agriculturally based country switching over to railways afterwards because i want to unlock the railway technology and we're also going to be doing apparently professional troops because we just unlock a professional army that's not what i was going to say though i was going to say that we're going to do central banking as well as our third in the queue since it's going to lower the interest rate on loans and it's going to increase the amount of money that we're minting and because we're making a thousand pounds already i'm going to be queuing up a secondary construction sector and i'm going to alt click on this bad boy so it gets built right now this means we're going to build our buildings a lot faster afterwards oh schnapps mary sue over here or rosanna potager honestly mary sue is probably a better name in this case <laughs> she's gonna offer us a universitato in ontario like literally our only province all right that means we're gonna be gaining some extra smarts in the form of innovation from here we're gonna be employing all the smart people that we have which is like seven people just kidding there's more than that for sure it's funny how we can actually try and go for a theocracy as the canadians that's just weird as schnapps to me as is the fact that we can also go for a monarchy so what's gonna happen then do we get to have our own king despite already having a qu king or queen in the uk that technically owns us right it's just weird man but hey you know what i'm gonna do our secret police everybody's favorite police because you just don't know about them so there's nothing to fear until there is but then it's too late so just don't think about it too much or i'm gonna send the secret police after you Okay, uh, what? We're at war with the British East India Company? Hold up a second here, my boy. Why? <laughs> Isn't the British East India Company supposed to be, you know, British? Alright, I'm super confused right now. What is going on here? They are a dominion of the British, but they're at war with the British. What? How? What is the war target? What is the war goal here? Ban slavery. Oh, right. Okay, the British want to ban slavery and a vassal of the East India Company. Okay, I guess you could say that diplomacy in Vicky 3 is a little bit complicated but hey you know what on the bright side i just realized good thing i paused that we could confederate now we just have to be at peace meaning uh once this war is over i'll be able to confederate with either lower canada or with the hudson bay company let's see which one we got 1.4 million gdp as well which is not bad overall we've definitely improved our gdp considerably let's check these bad boys out they got 1.32 all right that's not bad so if we confederate with them we're gonna double essentially our gdp all right boys we're is over let's go ahead and click the button boom shakaloki god save the queen and we are annexing the other part of our um well, our neighbor really there you go that means we now have holy snap we got a massive deficit all right there's that apparently which we will fix right now don't worry we gained a full state from that and this state has an art academy a shipyard government administration university a few fishing wharfs logging camp iron mines oh that is good we're gonna be able to start focusing on our iron industry but most importantly guys we have to incorporate this is gonna take five years it does not automatically incorporate it so you got to manually do it it takes a while but once that's done we're gonna improve our economy massively because you're not getting any taxes from the state since it's not incorporated that's why the economy went down by a lot however if this is a hundred percent incorporated this would probably be like 1,000 on the plus or something like that now we have this uh, modifier here Canadian unifier for 30 months after this expires we can click the button again and we can incorporate the next nation which 
which I presume would be the Hudson Bay Company next. Now we can also do this interest here. So that means we can start improving relations afterwards with the uh, Colombian district. Once the interest has been fully established there. Boom shakalaka. Right now. There you go. Improvius Maximus. And our economy is absolutely tanking. That is no bueno at all. But it is what it is. Cannot really do much about it sadly. Looks like we're only getting 77 out of 206 uh, taxation. That is going to change later down the line. Once we fully incorporated this. We can also start improving now with uh, Nova Scotia and New Brunswick. Since we are in this particular region. I guess you could say that we're the nicest people around. Since we are improving relations with everybody right. Leaning into the stereotype let's say. I'm going to start queuing up some iron mines. I'm going to go with uh, four iron mines. We're going to have five out of 26. And we're going to max out this eventually. But I don't want to max it out just yet. I want to take it slow a little bit. I've also went ahead and I've uh, increased my taxes to very high taxation. This is not really good because it screws up your standard of living. And it uh, lowers the investment pool. So it's not really the brightest idea. But I'm only doing it temporarily to get my income a little bit up. Now that it's already at 1,000. I'm going to lower this back to uh, high taxation. And then back to normal after it increases a little bit more it slowly increases itself quite rapidly the more you uh integrate the new province here so because we got 35 percent integration progress on this we massively improved our economy once it reaches like 50 percent we can lower down to a uh, normal taxation i'm actually curious if you guys enjoy this type of video where i explain a little bit more in depth let me know in the comments if that's the case so i know how to adapt this a little bit more in my videos to come as well it's that time of the year again this time we're annexing the hudson bay company meaning we got huge in the process look how many states we managed to get now we got manitoba saskatchewan alberta northern territories and the nunavut as well i think that's about it isn't it let me go over to my political lens and state action incorporate states oh the yukon as well i forgot about the yukon good point there now these two we cannot incorporate just yet because we have to continue uh, the um, annexation progress of these two provinces so that means we got to get some colonial affairs going we don't have right now any so we're gonna go for colonial resettlement so we can finish colonizing these two two provinces before the Americans do. They already seem to be in the process of uh, colonizing the Alberta part, so we might have to fight them to get that from them. I don't really, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the Americans owning this. It's just, it looks horrible, doesn't it? And we managed to get this fairly quick. Let's see, now we should be able to uh, advance our expansion into the Iron Confederacy. 1,709 days, holy snaps, that is a lot of days, dude. Would I be able to increase this a little bit? I would, but it's not gonna make much of a difference, is it? The Americans probably already have colonial affairs. Yep, they do at level two i honestly think that pdx should just make this line colonized by the hudson bay just so the americans cannot go into the north and then you get this border gore just my opinion though but i really feel like that should be a thing though we're gonna be building our railway in the yukon territory because it seems like the only territory that doesn't have enough infrastructure access now it's gonna increase the infrastructure actually once we make it a full incorporated state but i'm also doing it because the yukon has gold mines so i'm gonna be building this up to maximum so i'm gonna go all the way to seven gold mines one for now because we're still struggling with our construction progress and so on we got to prioritize other things but still it is vital that we get our infrastructure high in the yukon territory and it seems like we can also start building up some uh, coal mines i'm gonna start with one in saskatchewan and another one in alberta oh man look at that the americans are already basically they got half of the colonizable lands already man what look at the difference come on 38 days for them to get it and a thousand days for me to get it bro give me a break seriously all right we're doing super well now 5,000 on the plus that means we can start properly expanding let's queue up four construction sectors alt clicks over there at the front of the queue this way we can really really rapidly catch up to the americans and everybody else around us by developing a proper industry and a proper economy i mean 6 million gdp is not bad considering our beginnings but still we want to get a lot more than that don't we also need to confederate next is going to be with the columbia district but <laughs> you can you can probably tell can't you we were at war again with punjab this time because the uk likes to be at war every five freaking seconds they're like the america of the 19th century and it seems like the british got what they wanted which is punjab my god this state alone has 14 million population that is literally seven times more or six times more than i have in my entire country not to mention seven million gdp that is insane my man i'm actually curious if you guys want me to do a punjab video because i feel like punjab's one of those secret nations not many people know have a lot of flavor to them and have a lot of potential especially Especially if they manage to kick the Brits out of the uh, Indian subcontinent fairly early on. Now that we've said all that, let's all confederate with the next nation. Okay, the Columbia District, beautiful. Now we just need two more here, New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. And I think that should be it for forming the uh, Canadian nation. Oh no, we also need the 
the uh, Newfoundland, apparently, which belongs to the Brits right now. I guess it's only fair that we take these three states from uh, the Americans, considering that they're taking Alberta and parts of Saskatchewan from us, isn't it? Oh, wow, we can build gold mines in British Columbia, so that's pretty cool. We're building a second government administration building in Quebec because we need more bureaucracy and because this is the state that's growing the fastest. In a few years, this state's going to have a few million populations alone, as will the uh, Ontario state. There you go, we already got one million population in Ontario. That is huge by itself. And we actually got more in Quebec. We got 1.22 million here. Here is what our cultures look like. Let's check it out. We got Anglo-Canadians and Franco-Canadians as the top two, 1.1 and 800,000. Irish, surprisingly, is the third. We got 700,000 Irishmen and 335 Englishmen in our country, as well as a lot of Yankees, Portuguese, Dutch, even Germans. Hot diggity dock. Any Romanians in the house? Nope. Looks like my people have not yet discovered this land, sadly. Feels bad, man. Queued up an extra five construction sectors. Slowly but surely, we're making huge progress here, boys. One more Confederate show, and we got New Brunswick as well added to the fray here. This is part of the New Brunswick state, which includes Nova Scotia too. So let's start incorporating these bad boys. And I'm gonna start canceling some of my taxations here. I'm gonna cancel the um, opium tax and the liquor tax. Might as well cancel both of them. And we're gonna use that to encourage social mobility in Quebec, where we have the majority of our population. Plus, we can also get our cultural exclusion, meaning we're gonna lower the amount of authority that we have, but we get less radicals from standard of living and more loyalists, as well as we accept more diverse people into our country. And considering our population here is made up of literally everybody from everywhere, including Maltese, apparently, I think it's a good idea to accept more people than just uh, than just our primary races, I guess. The state of Yukon does have a special modifier, and it's a negative one because it's the northern Canadian terrain, meaning they get less infrastructure, less agricultural throughput, and state construction efficiency. So building here is a little bit of a pain, but it's worth it because remember, we got that sweet gold mine in here, boys, and a lot of them actually. Oh my lord, look at the price of iron going up so much. It's because everybody needs iron for everything. So we're going to queue up, say, 10 iron mines. Uh, let's say 15 iron mines in uh, Quebec. We're doing mostly in one state because remember, there's the uh, economy of scale bonus. Basically, the more of one particular factory that you have in a province, the more bonus you get. So for example, logging camps here, we get 70% throughput because we have eight logging camps in the same province. And it goes the same for every single goods produced in any province or state, whatever. One new state action that I absolutely adore is the uh, reset production method action. Basically, you click on this and you can reset to the default standard production method of your country wherever it's not that standard method. So whenever you conquer new states, you don't need to manually go through every single factory and reset it. You can just reset from this particular interaction. It's way faster and a much needed quality of life improvement in my opinion. Really glad that they added this in 1.2. We're really ramping up now, boys, and it looks like the British want to pay off our national debt. This happens sometimes if you have good relations with your overlord. It's not that big of a deal. We only had like 2 million in debt, so it's actually manageable. But I'll take it. I'll obviously take it. Somebody want to pay off my debt? Not going to complain about it. By the way, guys, if you want to get this save, you can find it on my Patreon or as a channel member. So consider joining either one of those if you have the means, of course. If you don't, that is A-OK. -okay. Just watching my videos means more than anything else in the world. So I really appreciate you guys taking your time and watching these vids. Now, the next question is, of course, how on earth are we going to get Nova Scotia? Well, it's not an easy one, but at least we're going to be getting Nova Scotia right now. Did I just say Nova Scotia the first time? I meant how on earth we're going to get Newfoundland, not uh, Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia is an easy one. There you go. We got it. Now, the entirety of the New Brunswick state belongs to us. And of course, we have a bureaucracy deficit again, meaning we got to build another government administration. I feel like I've built this the entire freaking session. Like only this the entire freaking session. And it looks like iron's in the highest demand possible. So uh, let me go ahead and queue up another 20 iron mines. Apparently the other 15 have not been built yet. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to be building more construction sectors as well whilst I'm at it. Because it does seem like I am still lacking a little bit of construction sector. There you go. Two more right now. And we'll build more as we go along. I did go up to very high taxation. So I want to start slowing down a little bit. Bring this down to a normal or medium taxes again. Meaning I'm not going to be building any more construction sectors for a little while. I did change this over to iron frame buildings though now. So because of that, iron price went up massively because we're using so much of it. Our private sector is doing pretty good too. They're building up gold mines, logging camps, and furniture manufacturers. Cannot complain about it. We got 200,000 investment pool for the uh, private sector. So quite a little bit for them to use in building stuff. Oh, we got 
got the Canadian Confederation. The unification of Canada is complete. The various colonial governments have integrated into one under the administration of the Upper Canadians. With the enthusiastic approval of Great Britain, we are going to be known... Oh, we're going to be a dominion of Great Britain and 20 prestige for 20 years. Okay, so we're still the same. If we want to be Canada, we actually have to go to cultures, a form nation, and a form Canada. Eh? So because we are now a dominion of the UK, we can actually conquer states. That means that we can go to war before we were not able to go to war because we were a more integrated version of a puppet of the UK. So that means we can attack the Americans whenever we're strong enough. So the next goal for me is to improve my economy, get a really strong army and get my war with the Americans going. The British will likely support me as well in that war. So I'll be able to get back my Alberta lands and maybe even take a little bit more of uh, the Americans from the northern bits here. For that matter, maybe even the Russians. I don't mind taking this from uh, Russia, the Alaskan ports, because I know for a fact that there's going to be some gold around these lands later down the line, right? It's time to get the big boy laws, including proportional taxation. The first moment we get this, we're going to get an extra 50,000 pounds as profit, and we're already swimming in money. We got 140 over to our construction sector. I'm about to switch over to steel frame buildings, but I just need more steel factories and glassworks first, so I queued up a few of these bad boys. Once they're done, I can make the switch over to steel frame building construction method. And we're doing super good. 27 million GDP. We're literally catching up to the Americans. They only have 50 million. So we've went from half a million GDP when they had 30 million to freaking 27 million already. So we're definitely on the right track here. And the best part is that because I am a dominion of the English, I am going to use the English in my war against the Americans. As you can see, they will side with us and the English have one of the strongest armies right now in our game. Sadly, the French will side with the Americans because they got an alliance. So um, I will have to get more of my own troops before I do declare my war against the Americans. I've also had my units set to irregular infantry, which really lowered the cost of everything by a lot. Now, because I'm going to go to war with the Americans, I will switch over to skirmish infantry, but not just yet. First, we need to build a few more barracks, of course, around the world. And by around the world, I mean around my country here, say another 15 over in Quebec and I don't know 10 in each of the American states we already have because everybody knows people in these states know how to fight better than everywhere else in our country right because they're Americans so we're basically making the Americans fight the Americans it's just massive brain isn't it actually you know what I'm gonna do 15 in each of these states get all them Americano boys there also seems to be quite a few revolutions in Europe the Austro-Hungarians popped out from a revolution the papal state surprisingly is a puppet of Prussia out of all nations. No freaking clue how Prussia managed to puppet the uh, papal states, but that happened, so it is what it is. And surprisingly also, the Persians are a puppet of the French. Well, they're a dominion of the French, kind of like what we are for the British, right? So whenever we do declare that war, it's going to be pretty much a global war since it's going to be fought all over the planet. Because I don't want to also make this video extremely long. I will be splitting this up. So whenever we get those 5,000 likes, I will release the second bit in which we will take over the entirety of North and South America. We got the economic base. We got the strength. All we need now is just to enact those bad boy wars. So if you enjoyed this video, check out this awesome Japan run until the next time. And I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support. If anybody else would like to also support me, you will find the links in the description.